So, uh, yeah, I would go and visit these physicists because Palo Alto was, was to become ground zero for Silicon Valley. It's a, such a fascinating image of seeing this one super genius physicist who's teaching classes get a visit by a teenage super genius physicist. <laughs> and he's like, oh, he's one of us. <laughs> and yeah, you catch well, you when you're a teenager. That's very as, interesting. As soon as they talked to them, they immediately knew what I was doing, so they would right. help me. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, in application of this thing, one of the things that we're seeing right now, um, when you, we're talking about quantum computing, back to that, um, one of the things we're seeing now is ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. right. ChatGPT, which is this fascinating uh, AI program that essentially scours the entire internet for answers for things and is so good at it. The answers for things, for just just data, people are getting diagnosed with certain diseases based on symptoms and blood work, and it's super accurate. Uh, legal papers, it could fill out legal forms, and it's it's wild the capacity that it has right now. You can pass the bar exam that way too. Yes. the bar exam can be passed with a chatbot. Yeah, it's like ninety eight percent, right? Now, here's the question: If quantum computing gets involved in AI, what are we looking at? Well, first of all, AI is a software program. We're talking about uh, homogenizing different kinds of essays on the web, splicing them together, and then passing it off as your latest creation. Basically, plagiarism using digital computers. It's a software question. However, quantum computers is bigger than that. Quantum computers is a hardware question where it actually increases your ability to do much more than with an ordinary digital computer. So the two of them, the uh, chatbots that are a revolution in software and then quantum computers, which are a revolution in hardware, when they get together, watch out. So we're talking about an extremely powerful alliance between software and hardware. Now, also, as you know, chatbots will also lie, cheat, swindle, joke, and do all sorts of crazy things. Yes. If you're a high school kid, you could write all sorts of science fiction scenarios, and some chatbot may grab pieces of that nonsense and incorporate it into their essay. Oh, interesting. So right. it can't discern what's, what's accurate. Exactly. The whole point. This is the whole ball of wax. Mm. Chatbots do not know what is correct or incorrect. They just gather information so they can be gamed. That's right. All they do is homogenize, cut up existing things that sound human, put it together, and then people say, my God, that sounds like a human wrote it. Of course, a human did write it. Isn't that interesting that they could game that also if they wanted to find out what percentage of people believed a certain thing? If they had some bad actors, some foreign uh, you know, governments that decided they were going to spread narratives as widely as possible, and ChatGPT just gathers up all this information, it could give you an incorrect understanding of what's happening in the world. That's it can give right. you an incorrect understanding of politics, of the, economics. The whole point is that even though there's a good aspect to all these software programs, the downside is that you can fabricate truth because it cannot tell the difference uh, between false and what is false and what is true. That's very interesting. If you talk to the chat, uh, the chatbot and say, do you know the difference between correct and incorrect? And they say, no, it's just on the web. Mm -hmm. They're just instructed to cobble together existing paragraphs, splice them together and polish it up, and then spit it out. But is it correct? It doesn't care. It doesn't know. So it is essentially like an amazing resource of information that's, is, that's very flawed, that can't discern and can't think. I do this. I have this problem all the time. I'm a professor, and I give assignments to the students, sometimes write a term paper. So what do they do? Some of them plagiarize. Oh, uh, how do you catch them? Uh, well, you read the essay, and then you read another essay, and you say, I've, I've heard that before. <laughs> I've <laughs> oh, seen that expression. Yeah, right. Right, right, the right. old-fashioned way. The yeah. old-fashioned way. But you see, that's what a chatbot is. A chatbot is like a teenager that plagiarizes other people's essays, passes it off as their own. Now, I'm a scientist. We like to think about things that are creative, new, innovative, things that will change our perception of the world. None of that. Absolutely none of that comes from a chatbot. A chatbot simply rearranges pre-existing essays. That's yeah. all it does.